Alright, let's unlock this. I'm excited to go Easter. Alright, back on Forza 4. Continuing on the King of the Mountain series. Last time, we sent this, the Ford RS200, up for Jimmy Kaido, and it became the fastest car up there. However, we are not going to be using a four wheel drive tonight. So, the last rear wheel drive car that went up was the C6 ZR1, uh, which did respectfully in the rear wheel drive class, currently clocked in at second place. However, there hasn't been many cars, there's only been four rear wheel drive cars, well, sorry, four two wheel drive cars. Uh, my apologies about the Seat Leon. Um, but yeah. They're sort of hovering around the 442-443 either. Area. Area. That will do. However, our new car that was sent up was specifically requested. So, that is exactly what I'm going to send up. Is this. The TVR Tuscan S. Now, it's going to be an interesting one, to be honest. Well, let's put it this way. It's a TVR, it's going to try and kill me. But what's got going for it is that it's light, £2,400, and I'm going to be putting in a lot of handling parts into it. So, it might actually not be too bad. So let's get to upgrading it. First things first, I could, I'm not going to, but there is the TVR Speed 12 engine as an option. Uh, but I'm not going to. Oh, the wee wing actually removes the brake lights on the spoiler. That's a shame. But it's got to be done. I need all of the rear traction I can get. Rear tyres, we're going to get 275s, 235s. Okay, not the widest things in the world. Uh, gearbox, I'll put that in. Diff, I'm going to want that. Nice. Suspension, ARVs, yes please. Uh, don't want a roll cage. Uh, probably not for the time being. Right. What am I going to do here? Because I could take... Actually. There we go. Right. What am I going to do here? I could... See, the car company weighs just a little bit over £2,400. So, it's a bit over a ton. I could get it to below a ton. I'm going for it. I'm going to go for less than a ton. Uh, interestingly, I can't force an aspiration in it. So, that's both... Well, really, it's a both a bad and a good thing. Good thing is, I don't have a choice of a turbo. Bad thing is, I don't really have... Well, I mean, to be honest, it's probably not the worst thing in the world to not really be able to put in some sort of induction. Okay, the gearbox isn't filling me with much confidence. That's it's added a lot of PI. Uh, I'm gonna put in a drive line. Uh, no, I think. Hmm. I think I'm gonna do that actually. I think I'm gonna put in a roll cage. Uh, so this is the car, a built to S class. It's got two seven fives with five hundred and forty five horsepower. But it does weigh two, just over two thousand pounds, two thousand and fifty pounds. So it's very light, very powerful, and it's rear-wheel drive as well. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting one. Also in TVR purple, it's absolutely glorious. Uh, absolutely love this car. So it's going to be an interesting one to drive. Probably a death machine, but you know the old thirty-seven was very light. And that did very well. So, let's see what this does. Okay, here we go. Well, here we are at the uh, Fujimi Kaido New Hill Climb. Currently trying to beat the current leader with that O37. With that 438.983. It's going to be an interesting one. To be honest, if this TVR will be able to do it. What I need to really be more in tune with is power control. And things like that. I need to be careful trying to get onto the power. Because there is a lot of power going through. Not the widest of tyres. It's not the worst 275s. But they're not brilliant. And it is very light as well. So it's going to be an interesting one. But we shall wait and see. 
I also love the interior in this. Uh, oh. Here we go. Nice. Off the line, it's not too bad, but in the second, it's again wheel spin. Oh god, that is a huge amount of understeer there into turn one. Oh my god. Oh god, it's TVRing. It's absolutely trying to kill me. The, the understeer is catastrophic. Good Christ. That is a lot of understeer. Come on. Get on the power. What is the acceleration like? The acceleration is very good. We actually got air time there. Over the little less section. Again, just be gentle on the throttle, gentle on the power. Getting a little bit of a uh, oversteer moment there. From not anything too bad. It's being a typical TVR. Come on. So now that I've learned that this car's got chronic understeer. Whoa! God! Come on. Let's get up the uh, let's get up the mountain now. That was a little bit of a lick of oversteer. I wasn't really wanting to try and really wanting to diminish if as much as possible, but I'm also trying my best here. But the uh, you know oversteer is going to happen. Just trying to keep it on. The good thing is, right, is because we don't have a forced induction. I can leave it in the lower gears. There's no turbocharger in this. Wow, the honesty is catastrophic. Having to head into the four hairpins. I broke way too early there, actually. That was a mistake by me. Not by the car being uh, not the greatest to drive. There we go, through the second one. That was actually pretty decent. Through the third. And again, the back end just letting go a little bit. I will say one thing, though. The acceleration is incredibly good. But the, well, the grip just isn't there. Oh, come on. Right, we're probably not going to be flat through the water chicane. In fact, we are actually. That is actually a huge amount of speed this car is being able to take. As we're now heading up towards the 50% hairpin. And to just slam on the brakes, just keeping the back end under control as much as possible. Oh, that was a mistake. Uh, okay, so I can leave it into second. I'll leave it. In second through the 50% uh, hairpin get another huge amount of understeer through there into the second tunnel sounds very good this TVR I will admit come on get it up here let's just focus on keeping it neat and tidy also can I just say the interior is massively white it's just blindingly it's almost neon white with just the shadows <laughs> I think it's a little bit of dodgy lighting, to be honest, but... Eh, oh. Uh, right, okay, heading up towards the waterfall now. The waterfall car park. Again, the back end is just wiggling all over the place. I am being careful on the power there. I'm not giving it all of the 545 horsepower. It's, you know, it is just a lot of... A decent chunk of power. Just in a very light car and things like that. Oh, I smidge locked the... I locked the brakes ever so slightly there, but the car's still under control a little bit. Going to get a little bit of an oversteer in a moment. Oversteer moment, sorry. But we are through that little section there. Come on, TV up. Oh, I cut the ball on the inside a little bit there. However, nothing too bad. I haven't lost a ridiculous amount of time. Now we'll see what the car's going to be like up the uh, up this section here, up the uphill straight. I'm just being careful. Right, there we go. Keep the car settled. And now let's see what can we get. Normally, cars are getting about 134. Not much more than that. Uh, we are doing 136. I'm going to be early on the brakes. That is probably a little bit too early. I could be a little bit more, you know, just a little bit braver with the brakes there. Come on. Get it on the power. There we go. I'm just... I am... I'm being really gentle with the power. Oh god. The uh oh oversteer. Come on. Settle. Settle down. I don't know. I can't believe I'm having to say that to a bloody TVR. Settle down. Because it's gonna absolutely ignore me. Right, okay. Come on, boot it! Right. First run, it's just a learning curve, but a 443.2 is not actually terrible for a first run. It's a, that's 
not too bad. It's pretty close to the uh, 190E. So uh, really, I don't think we're going to be finding fighting the O37. Uh, but honestly, it could be in contention to be the second fastest car. I honestly reckon this might, might be able to beat the C6 at R1. Uh, it should have, it should handle the 190E, no issues. I mean, it's only, what, three tenths? Almost exactly three tenths down on the 190E, and that 190E was actually worse to drive than this. I can tell you that much. Right, okay. Now that I know how the car is going to handle a little bit more, now that I know that it's got quite big understeer and things like that, I am going to be a lot carefuler with the turning and things like that. Right, okay, come on. Just being gentle with the power. There we go. Again, the acceleration is pretty good on this thing. Oh, I tapped that corner with way too much speed. The speed uh, there. I'm also failing English. And surprisingly, I'm trying to focus on A, commentating, but B, having to drive a bloody death trap up for Jimmy Kaido. It's not very easy, multitasking like this. I've right, got to be careful with this right hander in particular. There we go. Got to keep the uh, back end more in check this time. This is already feel. This is already a uh, faster run, less big oversteer moment there, but less, but less of the huge slides. It's going to keep the car more planted heading up the uh, heading up the course. Again, I'm just being. I'm just being cautious with the power because I have to really. It is rear wheel drive after all. I can't actually be that brave with the power. More, not really. Well, I say that brave. I mean, I wasn't massively brave with the uh, Leon Super Cup, but I was probably a little bit braver with that because I trusted the back end a little bit more. Whereas all the power in this is going to the rear, and we're going up the mountains. Not the greatest, but we are uh, through the. Through the uh, four hairpins now, actually very, very nicely. Actually, it's uh, kept a little bit more planted, heading up towards the water, to the water chicane. Oh, that is a very risky line, but it is flat out. Actually, carrying a huge amount of speed. I think that's the fastest, or potentially the fastest we've gone through the uh, the waterfall, the water chicane. Fifty percent hairpin now. Uh, come on. Right, leave it in second. I can't leave it in second. I do not have a turbocharger or... I mean, to be honest, a supercharger would be alright, but it is naturally aspirated. Um, so, you know, it's gonna... It's just gonna be decent everywhere. So I can't leave it in a higher gear. A higher gear. Gear? I don't know what I'm trying to say there. Uh, just leave the car... I think I'm trying to speak too quickly, trying to say keep the car more stable by being in the higher gear. So I'm going gable. I don't understand myself. I will be perfectly honest. Anyway, waterfall sh awful car park. Again, just getting it through. Just keeping the back end in check. There we go. Yep, that's more like it. I'm probably going to change the uh, what's it? The water chicane to the river chicane. It's just so that I don't confuse myself because I'm trying to say like waterfall, like waterfall and water flow. So I'm just going to call it the river. The river chicken. Honestly, it's going to make it easier for me. No other reason other than I'm not incredibly good when it comes to coherent English sentences and things like that. Right, okay. Anyway, enough about that. More about the uh, TVR and this run in particular. A lot more stable this time. I am uh, I am being gentler. Right. Are we going to carry a little bit more speed heading up to the... Heading down the uh, long straight here. Again, yep, the acceleration is there. Doing about almost 138. And that was actually much better on the brakes this time. Just trying to keep the back end in check. It's really the key. Well, with the, almost every single car. Uh, if you're trying to go quickly, keeping the back end in check. But more more exaggerated with rear wheel drive cars. Oh, I turned in a little bit too early there. 
Come on. Let's get it up the... Uh, get around these final couple of corners. It's a much better run this time. Come on. And through. Power. Final corner. It's gone quicker. It has gone quicker than the All-37. That 38.5. It puts it quicker than the All-37. That is absolutely incredible. The TVR Tuscan has gone faster than the Group B Rally Legend. This car is seriously, seriously good. Honestly, it really is. Um, like when it was recommended, honestly, it was probably going to be a death trap, but I have now managed to go faster than the O37, and there's probably a little bit more time in the TVR Tuscan. I don't know if I'll be able to get down into the 37s, but we never know. We'll have to wait and see. Let's get this off the line. Let's uh, take a little bit wider into Turn 1. Yep, the understeer is just massive into Turn 1 there. Let's try and keep the back end just a little bit more stable this time. Try and carry that a little bit more cornering speed. There we go. Through the, uh, through the first corner, first couple of corners there. Heading into the uh, this short acceleration zone, this little lesses. Yep, getting airtime all all throughout that uh, that little section there. Absolutely incredible. Am I able to? I've kept out of the wall this time. At least I think it was that corner anyway. I'm trying to remember now. I think it was actually. I'm just focusing on trying to keep the car planted, really, that's what I need to do. Oh, the back end stepping a little bit out there on the brakes. However, the rear of the car is more planted this time. Just keeping it. Just keeping it under check. Put it in the third. Oh god. Wait transfer over stay there. Tr trying to swap it into third. I'm gonna be on a very dodgy line there, but I might be able to tuck it in. There we go. Tucked it in at the uh, end of that left hander there. I'm just going to keep leave it in second. I don't really want to go in the first just yet. Right, heading up towards the four hairpins now. We've got this left hander. Yeah, the understeer there is massive. But I, it is because of the two three fives at the front. But I'm not allowed to put on front aero. That's the thing. So really, I think the main issue with the car is that the front doesn't turn enough because I can't. Well. I've got very skinny tyres at the front, but, you know, it's uh, it's still going faster, actually very nicely through the uh, four hairpins there, heading up towards the river chicane, again, understeer a little bit, but I am flat out through there, oof, oh, Jesus, that was actually really close to the wall there, that actually made my heart stop for a second there, heading up towards the 50% hairpin now, oh, got this my hand at the back end just, just want to let go a little bit in third probably should have shifted down to second a little bit earlier getting out the hairpin now again the wheels were just spinning so I put it into third try and reduce it I had a lot of understeer there trying to uh, get off the power there was a lot of off power understeer there it's a big issue it's going to cost tenths of, uh, of this run at the minute but it is feeling like it's going to be a pretty decent run just keeping the car planted through the slow speed corners as well. Trying to leave it out of first as much as possible, to be honest. Right, slam on the brakes. Come on, head up towards the waterfall car park. Again, car is doing nicely uh, through these two left-handers. There we go. More like it. And just a little tap on the brake, just making sure it gets through that left-hander. Oh, I can feel the car just losing grip. Just losing overall grip there, but it's still in it's still in one shape. So there we are. It's getting up this mountain actually very well indeed. Come on. Up we go. That's more like it. Oh understeer. Lots and lots and lots of understeer through there. But I managed to keep up the walls. I'm gonna go on the power a little bit earlier this time. Oh, a little bit too early there. And looks of things, slam it on the brakes, get it through this uh, right hander, and then we're on the power onto the uh, uphill straight. Again, we are. Go this is looking to be a pretty good run as well. 
doing the 137 and slam it on the brakes. Actually, probably, I'm probably a little bit too early. I could probably risk it to 138. However, this is the final run. What I need to do now, though, is just keep the back end planted through these final couple of corners. Oh, a little bit too much power there, but the car has resettled. Come on. The back end is still in line at the minute. Oh, a little bit of understeer. But we are through, through the final corner. And... Ooh, 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 not quite a 4.36, but very, very close. A 4.37.267. That is very, very close. That's almost... That is almost beating the benchmark car for the four-wheel drive cars, the Audi Quattro. That is ridiculously good from this car. Holy hell. Yeah, that is a seriously competitive car. Seriously, seriously competitive indeed. And so we now have a new leader for the two-wheel drive cars, the TVR Tuscan S. It was a seriously, seriously good car up the King of the Mountain. I was really worried about that car's drivability. Uh, just, you know, with it being very, very light uh, and having a decent amount of power in it, I was really concerned that the car would just be a death trap. However, it really, really was not. The car was actually just so easy to drive, even at lower speeds. Oh, you know, you could see I was able to keep the car under check and things like that, for, and for it to almost go two seconds quicker than the previous leader, the old 37. Honestly, that is mighty, mighty impressive. The fact that it has broken the the um the away from the other three cars in the 442s, and you know. Five seconds faster than the Corvette and things like that. It's impressive. However, that is going to be it for me. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, do the stuff the YouTube algorithm likes. If you want to suggest a card to go up King of the Mountain, leave it in the comments, or there'll be a link in the description to join my Discord. Leave it there. However, that's it for me. Until next time, ciao for now.